So Paul, this is Rafi Media Villa really from Critical Levels.com. Thank you for taking time your time to talk about the movie. I'm a huge fan of Westerns and specifically this one because it's based on a true story. I'm a sucker for anything that's based on a true story. We, I, I always like to see what how it transpired into screen. So congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it was wonderful doing something based on a true story that we tried to keep true as possible, actually. So we're going to dive on that, but I, I want to talk first. What is it about Westerns that they, they all tend to work? They, like, to me, there are two genders that work great. Horror is one of them, and the other one is... Oh, yeah. why, why do they tend to work? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, it's bridging uh, an actual period in our history, of course. Um, but then, you know, it's interesting because I'm a big fan of Sergio Leone Westerns. In fact, I, I did a, a post-apocalyptic Western in 1994 called Steel Frontier, which was, uh, it, it was, uh, we based it on a lot of Sergio Leone. It was almost like a homage to Sergio Leone. Um, and those aren't, those are almost, those almost inhabit a whole other universe, you know, but, but the American Westerns, they could be a slice out of our history. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that they do uh, ring true, you know. I mean, I think it maybe most Westerns are a little more deadly and dangerous than, than possibly it was in that time. Not not to downplay it, because it was pretty dangerous. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so they're a slice out of our American history. Yeah, true. I wonder... How much of the story about the Rufus gang, which is mostly, you know, we're focused on the Rufus gang and what they did back then, because they did a lot of stuff and we only, we only cover so much of it in, in the movie. How much did you knew about them before coming into the story or did you found out about them when the project came about? Yes, when, when the producer handed me the script, that's when I first read about the Rufus gang and I was enamored I just loved what I was reading. I found it very interesting. What was really amazing was the Oklahoma, Arkansas Territory was basically run by mostly Indian, Black, Asian police. There were very, the whites were the, the fewest people there. Um, it, it, it was amazing how many Black and Indian uh, um, police that they, they had that were basically policing themselves and try to make something in their territory. Um, I wonder how much does it translate to modern days? Because I think, I mean, I, I, I've seen a trend with the killers of the flower moon and I'm seeing this one also. And they're open, we are talking about stories that we nobody knows about them. Nobody, still, nobody has told them till today. And, and when I saw this one, I was like, there's still a lot, a lot of stuff modern day that's still happening that, that, is, that, that, it, that it can be brought back from, from those days. How do you how do you see that you know within modern days and those times what what do you still see that from the movie that still is happening you see it in day to day? Well, I I I mostly centered on the fact that this happened to the Rufus Buck gang that they went to the missionary schools that them being um, well half breed Indians had to experience the you know, the, all the bad things that happened to them, the stealing of the land, the well, the the, the, the stealing of their women, the raping of their women, the uh, basically um, ending their way of life. Um, and then the fact that they were just doing back to the whites what was done to them, that was really mostly what I was dwelling upon thinking about. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I didn't really bring it into modern times um, it was just there. And, and, and the fact that it didn't, I mean, it didn't make it okay for them to react the way they did. Uh, it wasn't an excuse, but it was, and this is a, uh, a line from the movie, it was the seed of, of all evil. You know, it was a seed that, that grew and grew and grew until they finally it it, it 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 budded, it exploded, and they did their their reign of terror, their two 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 weeks to a month reign of terror. Um, so you can understand it, and of of course, I also I'm still amazed at how the gang um, 
um, um, took it all in. And by the end of the movie, you feel for them. You are, you, yeah. you actually like them. They, they're okay. anti-heroes, but you, you, you feel for them, you know? The, hum um, the human side gets, gets turned up in the, yes. yeah. Yes. I, I want, I want to ask about, you know, the screenwriters and I want to know you as a director, when you got the script and you saw what James wrote and what John wrote, did, did you follow the, just where about where what they what they what they what they wrote or did you feel like hey I know a little bit more about the story now can we add this or that or what we saw is just how it how it was written yes no no I I okay so I I I got the first script from James Russo um, and I read his script and I read his novel the um, supposed best selling um, Amazon novel and found it extremely interesting saw the differences between each understood that realized this could be better we we could actually improve upon it so we hired um um john yeah john, uh, james o'brien james yeah, o'brien right. i'm yeah. sorry the older i get the i forget words and names Don't and worry. stuff but i wrote it Don't down worry. i wrote it down so Don't yeah worry. and and we spoke and we spoke at length and and we just discussed everything and uh he had some amazing ideas some of them which didn't make it you know on film but um i was extremely happy with the final rewrite i i rewrote some stuff I, me and the producer um um, um patrick durham rewrote yeah. things too so yeah. in fact things were being rewrote sometimes yeah. to the very moment we shot them actually uh, i discussed so much with uh, um, Charlie Townsend, who played Rufus, um, I, I was entirely open to any input that he had that seemed to make this character more true. So things changed, and 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 same thing with um, uh, the guy who played um, Heck Thomas, Tim Abel, because it really centered, at least for the second half, between Tim capturing uh, uh, Charlie. Uh, they both had a lot of input, and and I think the film was made better by this. I, you know, I mean, it, I'm I'm okay with, with talking to my actors. Whatever makes them work the best, you, you know. And I mean, sometimes you have to you have to say no. That that's not working for me. But it's a three way conversation. So I, I want to speak a little bit about the cast. Obviously, Danny was a storyteller. He was telling the story of how everything happened. But obviously, Charlie who blew my mind, he carried the film, in my opinion. He I agree, I agree 100%. Right. So he carried the film, not only with his emotions, but, 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 but like, you know, when, you, when you put him, that what the story had him to do. So I wonder, uh, how, can Danny Trejo being Danny Trejo, did he brought something to the table that you weren't expecting, and same with Charlie, how did that, this came about? Well, um, I worked with Danny uh, in two previous movies, so I got I've, got I've gotten to know him fairly well. He's he's a wonderful person, and um, it's not a surprise that he um, what he brought to the table. Um, he's just he's a delightful person, and I mean. Of course, the script was written before he came in and sat down and read the words. Of course, he made them his own so well. Mm -hmm. You know, just his glances, his smiles, his nuances, um, you know, everything that he does bring to that. He's such an original, you know. But, I mean, of course, the words were were there, and he just he brought them to life. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that uh, that that scene, for as simple as it is, does add something special to the movie. Uh, I mean, well, Danny Trejo being Danny Trejo, of course, people love him and they 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 they, lo they love to see him. They love to hear him talk. Um, um, I was just very thankful that he was part of the movie. Yeah. What about Charlie? I want to talk about Charlie. Well, how, oh, how... Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh my God! What a wonderful experience that was. I I the moment he came in and read for me, I knew it, this was our Rufus. Mm -hmm. Even though previous, we had, uh, okay, the rest of the gang re read for me pretty much before Charlie. And several of them um, could have been Rufus too, honestly. Mm -hmm. They're all very talented. I mean, I was so lucky to find this group of young men 
who were just so into it and such fine actors. Um, I, I mean, but I think Charlie, is this might sound a little crazy, was very close to channeling real Rufus Buck. Yeah. Um, I, I swear to God, it felt yeah. like he was channeling that character or, the, or the, that, 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 well, that, that long dead person. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, just what, what a pleasure uh, working with such, su such a talented, hardworking actor, you know, but, but, but I, I, the rest of the, of the band, the, the team were also amazing too. It was, it was a group effort, but yes, Charlie, he was at the head and, yeah. and oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, in my opinion, he, he, the thing I, I say he carried his film because every his skin was the screen present to me was so uh, you saw the screen present every time he we saw him in front of the camera. Like you said, you know, created the character. So he, he gave it all he saw, obviously. That's why I, I, I mentioned that he carried the film, in my opinion. Now, you know, before I let you go, uh, there's a there's just, there, we don't enter into details, obviously, but there's a social there's a, there's a social commentary behind the story. Uh, and you already dabble into it, you mentioned a little bit of it, but what, what do you, would you expect people to take away from it? Well, just uh, the reality of our history. Um, you know, um, I mean, I think that, I think we're doing better and better and better. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we have a black, we had a black president, you know, mm -hmm. that that's, that's amazing. Um, so, you know, there's always room to improve, but we, we still, we are doing better as, as a country. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're, we're in a critical time in a way after, you know, th these many years <laughs> being a republic, it, uh, things are getting shaky, but I, I think we'll pull, I think we'll pull through. Yeah, that, that's why I think that a lot of it, the story still uh, resonates to these times and we, we can still see a lot of the things that happened back then, we'll still see them today, you know, like that, right. like in vanilla, we just feel them in like a, a mirror image. So, Paul, once again, congratulations on the film and thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.